I can't wait to stand this. I, I love to be perceived. That just sounds like the coolest thing. Like, oh. I have high hopes and small arms. Is the man in this book is literally like, oh my god, he's successful. He's a boss. <laughs> Rachel, this is Let Me in the Library, and today we're going to do my November TBR. So, um, <laughs> I really tried to make my October TBR work, and last month was just so much. There were so many things going on in my life that, unfortunately, my October TBR did not make it out to you. And I did film it in a car, which is my whole thing that I'm trying to do now, but I really didn't want to keep making excuses and make this, like, take longer and longer and longer, so the November TBR is not going to be in a car, it's just going to be right here. Um, I'm just going to tell you everything that I'm interested in reading in November, including some books for the Big Three Readathon, which I am hosting with some friends, um, and just some other things that I'm going to be involved in with book clubs and other stuff that's going on. So let's get right into it. So you may already know that I do a monthly dice game in which I roll some 20-sided dice and it tells me what to read. But because October, this past month, was the one-year anniversary of me doing this game, I decided to change up some of the prompts to just spice it up, make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna very quickly go through what the new list of prompts are now, and uh, then we'll get right into the rolls and everything like that. So uh, if I roll a one, I will read an intimidating read. A two is a long read, which is 400 plus pages. Three is a TBR veteran. Four is to roll a four-sided dice and use that to choose from a pile of four things in front of me on what I'm gonna read. Five is to play spin the bottle. Six is now to do a mood read. Seven is to read a nonfiction book. Eight is now to read from my owned TBR. Nine is to read a romance. Ten is to play the new Bookopolathon board, since there is sort of an updated one. Eleven is to do a random A to Z generator and choose a book whose title or author begins with the letter that gets chosen. Twelve is to let a playlist pick. I will basically find a playlist somewhere and randomize it, and then the song that pops up, I will try to find a book that suits the vibe of that song. Thirteen is to read a sequel. Fourteen is to read a book crush. Fifteen is to read a book which is chosen by my cat, Sasha. Um, Sixteen is to read a book that's chosen by Pole. And seventeen is now to let Goodreads choose my TBR, which is inspired by the game that Sasha from the Redhead Reader runs on her channel every month, so I'll link that in case you're interested in checking it out, which I highly recommend that you do. Eighteen is to read a graphic novel, manga, or novella. Nineteen is to let a friend recommend something to me. And twenty is to pick my most anticipated book of the month and read that. Those are all the updated prompts. All the rules are exactly the same and normally I do roll six dice every month but because I kind of missed the video from last month and admittedly I basically didn't read anything off of my dice TBR. I'm actually rolling 12 times this time. So half of this is online because that was what was available to me at the time and the other half is like real actual dice in person. So I'm going to just take it away with the online dice first. You'll see what I rolled there and then I will do my in-person dice and we will see what I rolled from there as well as the little four-sided dice that I'm allowed to roll every time I roll six dice at once. I'm saying dice a lot. The point is every time that I roll six dice together then I get a four-sided dice and I can use that to roll it and then change one of the prompts that I get by the number that's on the dice. So let's just see what I rolled. Okay I've got an 11, a 2, a 3, a 9, a 14, and a 16 for my first roll. Now I'm going to roll my other four-sided dice, and it's a three. Hey pals, we're back to some in-person rolling. Let's do it. Well, I just lost two, so let me re-roll the two that just ran away from me. Here we go. All right. So, we've got 18, an 8, a 5, a 7, an 11, and a 6. I'm going to roll a four-sided dice, and we'll see what I get. Okay, I have my four-sided dice, and I'm gonna roll it. Okay, I got a four, so I can change any one of these rolls by four. Okay, welcome back. So now we have some stuff that we're gonna do. So first off, I got a two, which is to read a long read, which is 400 plus pages. Honestly, I've been reading this book for a while and it's not really going well, but that book is Plain Bad Heroines. This is definitely at least 400 pages. I believe it's like closer to 600-ish. So this is um, a story that takes place across two different timelines. There is the past, which is about a hundred years ago, where this Brook, Brookhants, I don't even remember what it's called. Some school gets founded uh, where there are these girls and they form a secret society called the Plain Bad Heroines Society. Um, Brookhants, Brookhants School for Girls. Um, and it is a cute little club, but maybe it's not that cute because it kind of seems more cult-ish. And also a lot of the girls that were part of this society ended up dying. 
Um, and now, in the present, they're trying to make a movie about the incidents that occurred at this place. Um, and the school closed down many, many years ago. So they're trying to film on there, and they're noticing a lot of weird things happen while they're filming. Um, honestly, like, nothing's happened yet, and I'm like, this isn't even accurate. I'm further in than this. Um, <laughs> not a lot has happened. This is a gothic horror, I believe. So that's why it's usually more about, like, the slow, creeping, atmospheric writing and stuff like that. Um, honestly... I don't think this is going to be like a super high rating for me, but I am interested to see what it's all about because I only have a little bit more a ways to go. So that's my pick for this one. The next roll that I got was in five, which means we're going to play spin the bottle. So I laid out a bunch of books in a little circle and I picked up a water bottle and I spun it around in a circle to see what it is that I'll end up reading. And it ended up landing on Nine of Swords. This is a book I've been meaning to read for a while now. It's also very chunky, so definitely could have counted for over 400 plus pages. Um, but this is one that I don't know why I keep putting this off because it seems like it's going to be really fun. This one is about a bunch of kids that go to this magical academy and there are all these different trials and weird tests. Um, I'm not positive if they're actually like death games, but that's what my impression of it was. Um, like, there's a lot of different, like, magical creatures which maybe aren't to be trusted. We hope to see you at the end of your games, should you make it that far. So it makes me think that, like, there are all these scary things going on throughout the year, and then something really big is going to happen with some trials and stuff. Um, so I really love magical settings, I love magical schools, and I love trials and competitions and death games, so I really hope that this is up my alley. Definitely need to read this um, right away because this was very kindly sent to me by the author and I want to actually give my review. The next thing that I got was a six, which means I'm going to do a mood read. And so for this, I chose A Line to Kill. This is a new book by Anthony Horowitz in his, um, like, detective crime murder mystery series. And, uh, this one follows a detective named Detective Hawthorne and his sidekick, Anthony Horowitz. So what's really cool about this is Anthony basically writes himself into the story as sort of like the James Watson to the Sherlock Holmes, uh, character. And, it's really funny. Like, I, I really just enjoy reading stuff like that. I've been really craving to read, like, a, a mystery like this, and that was definitely going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, next up, I rolled a 7, which means I read a nonfiction book. So for this, I chose The Order of Time. I've been meaning to read this one for a while. So The Order of Time is a case that's made by Carlo Rovelli um, about time, and if we can travel through time by, like, you know, just living and being alive and we head towards the future, that's the direction and flow of time. But if time is just a thing that we exist in, you know what, people are always saying time doesn't exist. If we just exist in time, how come we can only go forward? How come we can't go backward? And it kind of tries to make a case for if the idea of like the present even exists. So um, it's definitely like a thing that sparks my interest because I really like sci-fi and time travel concepts and stuff like that. And I just really enjoy reading a nonfiction every once in a while about physics and just, just the way that the world works. Next up, I rolled two eights, and so I'm going to be reading two books from my owned TBR, and this is perfect because they are both for some book clubs that I'm in. So I have The Lost Apothecary and I have Vicious. The Lost Apothecary is the Winer's Book Club pick. This is a story about um, this woman who runs a shop that basically sells poisons to women who want to kill the people, uh, the men in their lives that are like oppressing them or holding them you know, in uncomfortable situations. Uh, and there's actually also another timeline in the present where there's a woman who travels to London and I think she like discovers the lost apothecary at some point. So this one seems like it's gonna be really fun. Uh, uh, we're doing this on Darian's channel for the live discussion. That's going to be very early in December when we start discussing it. But yeah, I'm really excited about this one. And this is actually a gift from Jess from Books Past Bedtime. So I'm really excited to read this one. This is a very gorgeous, beautiful cover and can't wait. The other one is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is the first book in the Villains series, and we are reading this for the Fanta Series Book Club. This follows this guy named Victor and his best friend Eli. They are both people who basically somehow gave each other superpowers in college, and now, ten years later, they are at odds with one another, even though they used to be best friends. We are following Victor as he tries to track down Eli, who is maybe using his powers for bad and not being the best possible person. Um, but Victor has been in prison for ten years because of an incident in their past, so we are following the story, we're trying to see what happens. It is really a battle of good versus evil, but kind of more like bad versus worse, and I'm really excited to see how this all pans out. We're reading this for the Fantasy Series Book Club, and actually, because it's now November, we are also going to be reading the sequel, Vengeful. Um, so we're doing all the reading sprints and the live shows and stuff on my channel this time. Um, and also, I just want to quickly plug that we do have a Discord for this, and if you join it, we are going to be voting on our next series pick. So if you want to come and discuss the books and also vote on what the next series is going to be, please do that. Uh, we're going to have uh, all that stuff in the Discord, so I'm going to link that in the description in case you want to join us. The next thing I got was a 9, which is a 
a romance. And I'm really excited about this one because I know that there are quite a few people who love this book and I actually um, am borrowing a copy of this book right now. This is The Spanish Love Deception and I borrowed this from Casey from Casey Can Read. Um, Casey gave me her copy for a little bit and she actually kind of like annotated it a little bit. She like dog-eared some pages and she underlined some stuff and said like I could basically annotate it back. I'm really excited about this one. This is um, like all of the fun tropes of like enemies to lovers, co-workers to lovers, um, like on vacation, fake dating, all that kind of stuff. So this is a story about a woman who is like the only woman engineer at her company, I believe, and this guy who is like her work rival ends up going with her to her sister's wedding in Spain and pretending to be her date. Um, I have read like, I read a very disappointing romance recently, so I really hope that this one will like fix it for me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to like feel a lot of like joy and even if it's corny or whatever, like I just think it's gonna be a good time. You have hyped it up. Everyone has hyped it up. I better Ooh. <laughs> I'm just saying all I'm saying is the man in this book is literally like it's isn't it a workplace romance? You're already gonna like it. So yes. please. It's a fake Wait, dating. Uh -huh. <laughs> fake dating. <laughs> These are like literally country, favorite things. Out of marriage. Any uh, lovers. Any lovers. Is it not based in America? Yeah, oh yeah, and there's a travel trope. <laughs> Oh my god, this is going to be your favorite. He's not an architect, but he's like high up. He's a high up guy. Oh my god, he's successful. He's a boss. Wait, 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 hold on. Here's for real the last thing. Here's for the last thing. That will literally, it'll be the nail in the coffin. Is he, all right, get ready for this. Is he tall? Oh my god. I think he's. Yeah, the amount of times it's mentioned how tall he is. In the, the doorway? Ah! Is he like in the door, like holding a screechy? Ah! He's like in the doorway, just like this. Like, hey, how's it going? Yes. <laughs> he's 6'4! Ah! Fucking hype. Oh my god. It is getting hot in here. It is getting hot and toasty. We need to sprint. Okay, the next thing that I got was an 11, which means that I do the random A to Z generator. So running that little wheel, I ended up getting an S, which means I need to read a book whose title or author starts with the letter S. And so I actually did that like twofold by picking Scythe by Neil. Schusterman, so I have that double S right there. Um, I have been meaning to read this for the longest time. I actually was meaning to read this like a year ago or something like that, and Nitty got this copy for me uh, sometime in like January of this year. So I definitely need to read up. Um, but I'm gonna be buddy reading this one with Yasmin from Yasmin Be Reading. We have both been definitely needing to get to this book. Death has been eradicated. It's no longer something that just naturally comes to people, and because of that, the population grows in a very different way than it does in our world. And so they have these reapers, these people who are scythes who come and they basically kill people um, to, I guess, like fix population control. And this has a lot of interesting conversation about death and philosophy and life, and I think it'll be a pretty interesting one. A lot of people really 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 enjoy this one and i really think that i will too so i'm really excited to finally get to it um i just need to actually open the book and get reading okay the next thing i rolled was a 14 for a book crush and the one that i'm picking for this is iron widow this is a story about a young girl named zetian wu who basically enlists in the army as a pilot concubine um in this world there are these gigantic mechas that are called chrysalises and they are powered by the pilots inside using their chi so there is a male pilot and a female pilot and basically the male pilot will operate the machine but they will just like suck the chi out of the woman um and that's why she's like the concubine pilot and so oftentimes the women die because of this um, whole process of what goes on and so she decides that she's going to enlist as a concubine pilot but she's really only doing it for revenge to kill the guy who um, drained her sister of her cheat and ended up killing her in battle. I'm really hoping that it is a good one for me um, but we will have to wait and see. Honey you've got a big storm coming. Next thing I have is a 15 which means that Sasha my cat chooses my TR so I laid a bunch of treats out on some books and then I had to go find her um, and lay her in front of the books to get her to choose. So the one that she ends up you know, setting her sights on and deciding what the book for me, or the one with the closest treat to her, is Follow Me to Ground. Um, this is a pretty short one. Uh, I, I, would, I don't know, is this considered a novella? It's, it's really freaking short, but yeah, this is definitely one that I have been thinking about for a while, and I thought it would be good for kind of like spooky season, and since spooky season is over, but I just don't want it to be, I'm still definitely reading things that would count towards spooky season. Um, not even just combining my October TBR, but I just feel like last month was there was too much going on. I did not get to enjoy Halloween, so I'm just still trying to be as spooky as possible until it's Christmas. Ada and her father, touched by the power to heal illness, live on the edge of a village where they help sick locals, or cures, by cracking open their damaged bodies or temporarily burying them in the reviving dangerous ground nearby. Ada, a being both more and less than human, is mostly uninterested in cures until she meets a man named Samson. When they strike up an affair to the displeasure of her father and Samson's widowed pregnant sister, Ada is torn between her old way of life and new possibilities with her lover and eventually comes to a decision that will forever change Samson, the town, and the ground itself. Cool. Sounds very cool. 18. Uh, usually I would pick a manga, but this time I'm going to pick a novella. And the one I'm picking is A Song for the Wild Built. I've been trying to read this one for a while. Uh, this is Becky Chambers' new novella that came out actually way back in July, and I just didn't know. Uh, and I thought it was coming out way later in the year, so I was totally shocked when I actually saw it at my library. But this is a... Um, pretty short novella and it's a story between a monk and a robot in this world robots uh, basically gained sentience many many years ago and society decided to let them go and be in the wild and just do whatever they want uh, out in the wild and they removed all sorts of like electronic stuff from their own society as humans um, so it's not to like infringe on the rights of robots and that was like I think hundreds of years ago 
So now um, a single robot returns, and there's also another character who's a monk, and they kind of strike up a friendship, and stuff happens. I assume it's going to be kind of like Becky Chambers' whole shtick, which is kind of like giving you life lessons and talking about wholesome things and the meaning of life. So yeah. The last thing that I got was a friend recommendation. And so for this one, I reached out and I asked Steph from Stephanie Bookish to please send me a recommendation. So we're going to go and watch me react to what she sends me for the first time uh, and see what she says. Okay, we're going to react to Steph's recommendation. Steph sent me a little video. So let's watch it together and see what she has picked for me to read this month. Hello Bessie, it's me Steph here to suggest you a spooky book for October and I just want to say that I scrolled through Goodreads hours. At what haven't you read? Um, that's my first question. Secondly, I tried to find something that I thought you would potentially really like and I sort of gave up but I did settle on Year of the Witching which I did Ooh. read last year and it has like religious elements but it's a cult and it has a spookiness. There's a plague happening so it's pretty disgusting but you'll get past it and it's witchy so I think it's perfect for October. I really do hope that you like it and thank you for asking me to suggest a spooky book for you. Love you. Bye. Yay. Okay. Love you Steph. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this. I saw some people talking about this book on Twitter or something and saying like I wish there was another book that's like Year of the Witching because it's so good and I was just like oh my god. I have not read that book and I've heard great things about it so I think it's time that I read that so I'm gonna have to go snag a copy I don't know if uh, I have audiobooks or anything of that but I'm sure the library has it um let me in the library so anyway yeah thank you so much Steph I'm definitely gonna read that and now we can get back to the original footage of other stuff <laughs> okay so yeah Steph gave me The Year of the Witching uh which I went and I promptly got from the library this is blurred by Emily Duncan which makes me a little worried. Anyway, a young woman living in a rigid puritanical society discovers dark powers within herself in a stunning feminist fantasy debut. In the lands of Bethel, where the prophet's word is law, Emmanuel Moore's very existence is blasphemy. Her mother's union with an outsider of a different race casts her once proud family into disgrace, so Emmanuel does her best to worship the father, follow holy protocol, and lead a life of submission, devotion, and absolute conformity, like all the other women in the settlement. But a mishap lures her into the forbidden dark woods surrounding Bethel, where the first prophet once chased and killed four powerful witches. Their spirits are still lurking there, and they bestow a gift on Emmanuel, the journal of her dead mother, who Emmanuel is shocked to learn once sought sanctuary in the wood. Okay, that sounds really good. Um, I am also by reading this with J Love from Lala Love's Lit, so we are just winning this month. So that is it for my dice game TBR, but I also have some other things to talk about, such as book clubs. So I already talked about the Winers Book Club and the Fantasy Series Book Club, but I actually have uh, a couple of other book clubs that I'm in or participating in this month. So I'm also in the Host Club, which is a manga book club, and we're doing some stuff on my channel this month. So uh, we're going to read three volumes of Monster and one volume of Liar Game. The Liar Game is a lot like Squid Game, so if you are watching that, might be a fun thing to try. Um, it is about a girl who ends up getting an invitation to a weird game uh, that's all about debt and money and trying to win and outsmart the other person. So it's not really like with Squid Game in the way that it's about children's game, but it is, you know, one of those pretty scary games and there's debt and stuff. And Monster one is about a doctor who ends up saving the life of these two children and um, kind of goes against like the orders of the people at the hospital. And so they kind of like make him lose his status. Um, he's like a very morally just person, but a lot of really bad things happen, including a string of murders. And he ends up getting accused for what happens and he needs to kind of clear his name. But at the same time, there's so much more going on than that. Um, this is definitely like a, a really popular manga for a really good reason because it is really, really, really freaking good. So I highly recommend this one. We're only reading three volumes of it for the book club, but I think I might just keep reading it if I can get to it. I'm also going to be on the 20-something book club's live show for White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This was one of my most highly anticipated reads um, of the year. Honey. I'm also going to be on the second ever episode of the Hot Girl Book Club, which is hosted by Noelle from Noelle's Open Pages. Um, and the book that we are reading is The Wild Ones. This is, I think, um, it really sounds like folklore fantasy type stuff to me, but this is a story about um, a girl who was once betrayed by her mother. Uh, her name is Paheli, and she was sold to a man in exchange for a favor. When Paheli escaped, she ran headlong into Tirana, a boy with stars in his eyes, a boy as bad as she was, who tosses Paheli a box of stars before disappearing. With the stars, Paheli gained access to the between, a place of pure magic and mystery. And now Paheli collects girls like us, and we use our magic to travel the world, helping us to save other girls from our pain and our scars. Again, that's what it's about. So, sounds cool. I'm excited about it. We're going to be discussing this on December 1st on Noelle's channel. So, get hyped. I'm... I'm hyped. I'm hyped. So let's talk about the Big 3 Readathon. So you may know that I am hosting a readathon called the Big 3 Readathon in November. It lasts for the entire month. If you haven't seen my announcement video yet, I will link it over here so you can check out all of the exact details. But basically everybody has a sun, moon, and rising sign which is determined by when and where you were born and stuff like that. So for instance, I was born on July 24th at 2.23 p.m. So if you type that into uh, a quiz but I'll, I'll leave it linked below if you if you want to check yours out. But um, if you type that in and you put like where I was born and stuff, it would tell you I am a Leo sun, a Gemini moon, and a Scorpio rising. So I have basically um, collected a whole bunch of memes along with the help of a lot of my friends and we have turn them into these prompts. In the Discord, we have a graphics channel, and from there you can scroll and find the appropriate Sun, Moon, and Rising sign for you. Um, 
the, the prompt that goes along with that. And so for me, I have a Leo Sun, which is to read a book with a beautiful cover. So I chose The Lost Apothecary because what a beautiful cover. For Gemini Moon, I have to read a book with an unreliable narrator. And so for that, I chose White Smoke. She literally says I'm an unreliable narrator in the book. So that definitely counts. And the Scorpio Rising prompt is to read a book that you were ashamed not to have read already. And so I chose The Jasmine Throne. Uh, this is a book I am buddy reading with Casey. We, she actually got this for me for my birthday. And I've been definitely meaning to read it for the longest time ever since she gave it to me. And I didn't. So um this is this is like one of the like big three like sapphic books or something that was coming out this year and a lot of people were really hyped for it a ruthless princess is seeking to steal a throne and a powerful priestess seeking to save her family together they will set an empire ablaze ex exiled by her despotic brother princess malini dreams of vengeance even as she remains trapped in the harana a crumbling cliffside temple that was once the revered source of the mysterious deathless waters the secrets of the harana call to priya but forced to disavow her birthright she works as a maidservant in a loathed regent's household biting her tongue and cleaning malini's chambers oh my god oh no she's her maid and now they're gonna fall in love I hope. As their world is beset by wild magic and turbulent uprising, the destinies will become irrevocably tangled and the course of a kingdom forever changed. <sighs> okay, yes. Um, the second book just got announced, like, the cover-wise, and it is beautiful, so I definitely want to read this one and um, just finally read it before the year ends. So this is my big three TBR. Um, another part of the readathon is actually to do a life prompt, and so because my sun sign falls into the fire category as a Leo, I will be doing the prompt, which is to basically like reach out to an author and write them a love letter and tag them in it. So I'm not sure who I'm going to do yet. I'm not sure who I will be writing to yet, but uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. I, I don't want it to be like somebody that I haven't rated their book high. Like, I don't want it to be sarcastic. I want it to actually be somebody that I'm actually a fan of. So um, if you can think of, you know, somebody that you think I should write to, definitely let me know. I, I love to be perceived, so let me know. I also really want to participate in Believeathon, so I basically just didn't bother printing out the cards for this time, but I just did a random number generator because there were only so many cards, so I did that, and as proof, I'm gonna put it right here so I didn't cheat or anything like that, but I did the randomizer, and the first prompt that I got was to read a book which features like a creature's name in the title. I don't know what to pick for this. So if you've got any suggestions, please let me know and I will really try to like read it in time because I just don't know what to pick for this one. But the next thing that I got, um, I think could work, which is to pick a book. What was the second prompt? Filming Rachel right now doesn't remember, but editing Rachel definitely knows the answer. So uh, whatever the second one is, this is the book I'm going to be reading for that. Oh my god, it's so bad. I really wanted to read Hollow Pox, so I think that might be the book that goes with this. I honestly don't remember at this exact moment as I'm filming this what the second prompt is, but whatever it is, I think Hollow Pox works for that. And that's the third book in the Morgan Crow series, it is The Hunt for Morgan Crow. So uh, I remember the second book ending in this really cool way, and it was really fun, and I just really wanted to see it like adapted to the screen as a movie or something. So hopefully my mind can fill in the gaps before we get a movie deal or whatever it is for Jessica Townsend. But yeah, that's what I am choosing for this. And then the last one is to read a book with an adventure. And I do remember that. Uh, and I don't know if this has an adventure per se, per se. It seems like there would be an adventure in this. But I was very recently and very kindly given a book. Um, and it is The Strangers. This has been on my wish list for the longest time. And Darian from Darian Reads sent it to me. And she's just such a sweetheart. Uh, I love her so much. And she just decided to give me this book. And this is, um, I mean, like, this sounds like exactly my kind of book, I will say. This is a story about these three siblings. You already have me. Um, and they, I think they have a close-knit relationship, so you have me again. And one day they find out that there is a, like, exact set of strangers who look exactly like them and have the same names as them, down to, like, their middle name. So you got me again. And I think they, like, nobody really believes that they're, like, the same person or whatever. But they were like, listen, something, something weird is going on. Like, something weird is happening. These people, they look just like us. I, I did not see us. I did not see we. I did not see, like, whatever that horror movie was. But I assume that this is like that, but for, like, middle grade. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be scary. Because believe me, middle grade can scare the shit out of you. So I'm here for it. And I just want to know what's going on. Um, also, their mom just, like, leaves. So these kids are just like, okay, mom. I guess we will figure it out ourselves. But... Their puzzling clues left behind, leading to complex codes, hidden rooms, and a dangerous secret that will turn their world upside down. Does that just sound like the coolest thing? Like, oh. I can't wait to stand this. I, I, I cannot wait to stand this. This is, I'm gonna say it now. No, you know what? No. If I, if I say this is a five star prediction, that means it's gonna be a three star. I'm always wrong about these. I just hope it's really good. I cannot wait to read it. And also, once again, thank you so much, Darian. I'm so happy to have received this, and I love you very much. Everyone, please go give some love to Darian. I'm gonna leave her link in the description too, so you can go give her some love. I have just a couple more books to talk about that basically aren't related to anything, but I just kind of want to read them. So the first one is Local Woman Missing. Basically, Casey uh, dropped into our group chat and was like, 
I think this book is so good and you should definitely read it. And then Steph and I both just immediately took it out from the library on Hoopla or something. So I am going to be reading that. I barely know what this is about, but I really do want to read a thriller. And I think it has a lot of twists and turns that are very hard to predict. So I think this will be a fun one. I also, <laughs> I am also part of the Barbarian Along, which isn't like a real read along per se, but it's basically a group chat of people who are like, let's all read the Barbarian, Ice Planet Barbarian series. So I'm on the third book, Barbarian Lover, and not gonna lie, these books are really fun and I'm digging it. So yeah. If you were at Reader Scare night one, you already know how I feel about the series. You already know how Mike Wazowski feels about the series beyond. But the last book I have to talk about on this TBR is one that I, I feel like I'm literally just not going to get to it, but it's The Broken Stars. Um, this is a collection of sci-fi that's translated by Ken Liu. Um, everybody knows I love Ken Liu very much. Oh my god, I should write to him. I would not know what to say to him. I would be star starstruck. I... <sighs> if he saw that I... If Ken Liu ever perceived me, it would be over for me. It would be over for me. Ken Liu, <laughs> um, uh, famous author of The Paper Menagerie, famous in my mind at least, um, I love him very much, and this is a series of short stories that were all, I think, sci-fi and fantasy focused, um, and they are, oh, just sci-fi, okay, and they're all translated by Ken Liu, so um, it has, like, a, a bunch of different authors, which I think will be pretty fun to read from, and this was the choice from, like, Tammy's book club a while ago, so I never got around to reading it. I'm not sure that there was, like, a live show or anything for this one, but I really just want to read it eventually and enjoy enjoy these sci-fi worlds just enjoy something like that okay that's it i think that's my entire tbr for the month um so now i'm gonna hold up the stack and you can judge me so i'm excited i i hope you can all shame me when i don't actually read all of these but i have oh my god i have high hopes and small arms but this is my tbr oh my god what was that which one? Oh my god okay sorry ken this is my tbr for the month um, it's a bunch of books, and I really hope I get to all of them. Um, if I don't, it's okay, as I always say. So, not too bad, not too bad for me. I feel like usually I'm like 40 plus books, here we go, and I just never ever do it. So even though this is still like a huge amount of books, it's more manageable for me, so I like that. Um, as always, you can yell at me whenever I don't actually read these books, but now you know, and now I'm gonna be accountable. Oh my god, Jesus Christ, okay. <sighs> okay, yeah, this is everything that I'm planning on reading in November. Let me know if there's anything that you are really excited to read in November, and I wanna know what it is. Uh, as always, if you want to support me, you can subscribe. And oh my god, if you don't want to miss anything, if you don't want to miss anything from my channel, um, you can definitely hit that little subscribing button thing next to the subscribe button. So that way you get alerted every time that I come out with a new video, which I will be doing. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, once again, please let me know what your most anticipated read for November is. And I think that's about it for me. I'm Rachel. This is Let Me Lie. I'll see you next time.